Welcome to Live from the Lab. This is the series where we explore different technologies that Brooker has developed in order to transform the world around us. Today's topic is pharmaceuticals and medical devices. We're going to want to take inside using some unique technology that Brooker has developed. Now, whether we're thinking about uh, a simple pill that you might be taking to relieve a headache or something like the mask that we wear when we're walking around in order to keep us safe, medical devices and pharmaceuticals definitely affect the uh, everyday life of uh, people around the world. To look at some of these examples more specifically and learn a little bit about the technology, we're going to show you a video right now. Healthcare is a primary need in today's world. This includes access to the latest pharmaceutical and medical device technology. Success is measured in lives saved and improvement in quality of life. At Bruker, our innovations enable the research, development, and manufacturing of medicines and devices used in this pursuit. X-ray microscopy, also known as XRM, is a technique which enables the non-destructive three-dimensional interior imaging of objects. XRM combines high-resolution microcomputer tomography hardware with advanced imaging software into an easy-to-use solution. To understand how XRM has impacted the medical technology market, a few examples are in order. Pharmaceuticals are carefully formulated based not only on their chemical makeup, but also in the way in which the active ingredients will be delivered. From checking API distribution to validating tablet coating thickness and crack inspection, XRM helps ensure the correct dosage will be delivered. Devices for the self-administration of medications has become a hot topic. A common example is the auto-injector. Auto-injectors allow an untrained person to administer life-saving medications. Using XRM, non-destructive inspection of complex internal mechanisms can be performed while in a medically sealed packet, ensuring that the device will operate as intended when it's needed most. In addition to the treatment of acute conditions, many medical devices have been developed to overcome chronic conditions to improve quality of life. Cochlear implants give individuals with hearing loss the ability to perceive sound. The device includes an internal implant and an external sound processor. XRM scans allow manufacturers of implants to maintain a high level of quality control of the complex internal circuitry, reducing the chance of defective components and ensuring positive patient outcomes. At Bruker, our goal is to enable breakthrough medical technology through analytical instrument innovation. Today, Bruker technologies, like XRM, are used to make significant impact in the global healthcare community. Now I am joined by my colleague, Dave Sampson. Hi, Dave. Hi, John. So Dave is uh, our XRM specialist uh, here at Brooker. Um, so I guess to start out with, Dave, what does XRM actually stand for? So XRM stands for X-ray microscopy. Um, people may know it as um, micro CT or micro CAT scanning. Yes, I've definitely heard of those things. Yes. Um, and is there any difference though? I mean, I'm used to the you know human level uh, CT, where we're looking at fairly large structures, uh, are these instruments modified in any way to maybe get better resolution? So the, the core technology is basically the same. You have an x-ray source, you have a detector, some way of holding the sample. Um, but the main difference between what we see as a materials research type XRM or a, you know, you know, research XRM and a medical XRM is the, um, our, the materials uh, XRMs are about 100 times, so two orders of magnitude higher resolution than the, than the medical XRMs. But okay. the, overall, the overall physics behind it is the same. Okay. So, and I guess, though, in the end, what it's producing is an image, kind of like a normal microscope might, but this image happens to be a three-dimensional model of the sample, right? That's correct. And that's kind of, that's um, CT is computed tomography. So basically what an XRM does is it takes hundreds or thousands of two-dimensional x-rays, so a standard x-ray radiogram, and then using software, it reconstructs that, all those um, 2D images into a 3D model of what's inside your chamber. 
Okay. So when we think about then looking at pharmaceuticals specifically, um, this interior imaging, what type of information can we gather by using XRM? Well, so um, XRMs um, are, you know, you're using X-rays and so different materials. So basically materials of different density will absorb X-rays um, in different amounts. So low dense material will absorb X-rays less than high dense material. So when you pass an X-ray through a sample, you know, you're going to get an image of the X-ray density of what happens when the X-ray passes through the sample. So then we can use those density differences to then see exactly what's inside. So in case of a pill, I can see things like the active ingredients versus the um, matrix, or I can see the coatings on the sample itself. So then we can you know, get a feeling for what's going on inside the pill. So why would somebody actually care about, say, the di distribution of that active ingredient? Well, a lot of pills, you know, um, are, you may um, take a pill and you may only need half the dosage, so mm -hmm. you can cut it in half. And I mean, you can go to any pharmacy and bill a, buy, uh, buy a pill cutter. So you want to make sure that if you cut that in half, that there's an equal amount on both sides. You don't want 75% of the active ingredient on one side and 25% on the other side, because that would then, you know, create some imbalance in, you know, in your mm -hmm. medication. So it's very critical to the, you know, process development of the pill. And you had mentioned coatings on pills. You know, I certainly, you know, have seen recently more pills that have these special coatings on them. What role do that, does that have and why would XRM be important in well, understanding um, that coating? In a lot of cases, that pill, the coating on the pill is designed as a time release. So you don't want the pill to absorb instantly. You want it to pass through your system or you want it to be dissolved at a fixed rate. And the coating, the thickness of that coating um, dictates how that happens. So when you uh, make a pill, the XRM will help you identify is my coating uniform, the thickness I want it to be, you know, because what's really important is that you don't have, you know, too thin of a coating or that your coating is asymmetric. Like you don't have a spot where your coating is, you know, like been damaged or is too thin, you know, because that would then cause the pill to be uh, the active ingredient to release early. Okay. So all of these things that we're talking about though, are really just um, pushing us towards that idea that we want to have that positive patient outcome. Exactly. And not only can we do it on the, the pill, um, I have a, um, a bubble pack here. I can actually do it on the product side as well. Uh, you know, the packaging side where we can actually image the uh, pill itself inside the bubble pack, inside the um, packaging. And we can actually make sure that after the packaging process, there's been no damage done to the pill. And so that the pill in the package reflects exactly what, you know, the engineers um, and the scientists want it to be. So now in order to utilize that, like XRM of something that's packaged, though, they have to use special plastics that are x-ray transparent. No, right? not at all. Not at all. Um, XRM is a wonderful uh, device for looking at plastics, um, even thin metals. So for a pass, for a sample such as this, I can actually tell you exactly, you know, what's plastic, what's metal, what's um, material, the active ingredients, all the different components that happen to be in this, we can image, you know, independently and identify them. Wow. So I, I guess this might be pushing it, but if I say had a foil backing and then we stamped a lot number into that um, package of pills, would you actually be able to read that too? Yeah, I can read, I can read the writing on a pill. The ink on a pill is actually, uh, quite easy to read because quite often you know, they'll have uh, a metal or different, you know, the density of that ink will be slightly different than the packaging or the pill or whatever else mm -hmm. it's on. Yeah. So this really then opens up uh, a lot of ways for companies to protect against uh, counterfeit medications. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. Now switching gears, maybe we talk a little bit about medical devices. Um, you know, here I happen to have a thermometer and some syringes that are in a package. Um, you know, maybe even some masks. Uh, those are all things, right, that we would look at with an XRM. Yeah, in fact, um, a lot, I do a lot of work with um, medical devices, um, hearing aids, implants, glucose sensors, and there's lots of various things that we can actually study 
in the package. Um, even circuit boards, if, you know, they want to know after the packaging, you know, are my circuit boards where they should be? Are they stable? You know, you do various testing, dynamic testing. And XRM is a non-destructive test. So therefore, I can look at the medical device um, and see inside to make sure the manufacturing processes are okay. Uh, all my solder joints are fine. Things like that. It's a, there's a whole wide variety of subjects or you know things that can be studied with XRM. And in today's world, medical devices can be found all around us, right? Even in our consumer electronics, like exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. My watch is you know a medical device. It, it can track a lot of my you know um, statistics. You know my heart rate, mm -hmm. things like that. So when we start to look at larger items, though, let's say that we had a, a titanium implant or something like this, then that's in a large hermetically sealed. Um, container ready to go to a surgical center. Could something that large actually fit in one of these ins these machines? Yeah, and we talk a lot about EpiPens. Um, uh, um, an EpiPen, you know, um, there's lots of devices, plastic, you know, it's got metal springs, it has epinephrine in it, and something like this can be easily imaged. You might have to image it in sections um, or do what we call a spiral scan. But, but yeah, um, you can take a large medical device like this and, and actually go through and do quality control type measurements, pro, uh, you know, method development or pro product development on something large or even larger than this. This is uh, just a nice typical size of a medical device. Okay. So, I mean, really then to kind of summarize it, it sounds like between the pharmaceuticals, the medical devices, what XRM really brings to the table is that extra layer of confidence in assuring that positive patient outcome to make sure that when these devices or pharmaceuticals are used, that we are going to get the anticipated results. Exactly, and that's all you're looking for. You wanna make sure what you think you have is what you really have. All right, great. So what we're gonna do now is we are gonna uh, take a few seconds, uh, transition our setup over, and Dave's gonna give us a demo of how we'd actually image some of these things using an X-ray microscope. See you in a minute, John. Welcome to my lab. So we are in the Bruker um, X-ray microscopy lab here in Madison. Um, so this is the 1275, so the SkyScan 1275 that I use every day. And it's kind of my go-to instrument. Um, it's fast, it's simple, and it gives me a lot of information. So we talked a little bit about the bubble packaging and I actually have a bubble sample mounted. I have a, a, a custom holder that mounts my samples nice and upright. Um, and then on screen, you can see um, an x-ray. Let me close my door. Sample gets rotated into position. X-rays on. Image on. So here we're taking an x-ray. So this is what my detector sees. Um, this is a very simple system. I'm just going to set the pixel size that I want to I want to image at. I know this is going to work about right. Put my pill pack into position. Um, in this case, I'm just going to do one pill. But if I wanted to do the entire set, that would be easy to do. I can easily do that in the software. Just tell it um, how much how many scans I want to take. and then hit scan. Now the system's gonna run. And that's really all it takes to set up an XRM and run it. Now this will run for about uh, five minutes. Um, you know, and in that process, it'll be taking, you know, five, 600 images. And later on, I'll show you how we can all stitch that in together into a, you know, nice 3D image. It shows us all the data that we wanna see. But I wanna um, show you a couple other samples that have been, um, coming into my lab a lot recently. Um, the first one is um, dental imprints. Um, I have had many customers in the last uh, couple of years send me uh, dental imprints. And so these are you know, what you would bite in at the dentist. And um, what are done with these is they are scanned in with X-ray microscope. 
From that, we create a 3D model. And that 3D model then can be fed forward into other processes. Um, I can just bring up. So this is kind of what my 3D model looks like. So I have actually a 3D image of this sample. And in dentistry, a couple things happen with this. Either you're looking at dentures and then they want to replace you know, an ent your entire imprint or your missing teeth. And then they create a mold of that. And then they can actually feed that to a 3D machine. And it'll print out your dentures. Another um, application is uh, braces. So clear braces. Lots of companies are doing that. So they actually do is they create a model of your teeth and then they use their software to create a mold that then creates the um, dentures or the dentures, sorry, <laughs> the braces. Uh, and that's actually a, a very, very hot topic in the field of XRM right now. And actually for something like this, I would actually make a custom sample holder out of Foam. Foam is the XRM microscopist's friend. It's fairly invisible to x-ray. So I can create custom molds or custom sample holders um, and actually slide it in. It's invisible to the x-rays, and yet you still get a good image, and it's like he'll hold your sample in place. About a year and a half ago, when the whole COVID crisis started, um, the world was short of these guys. This is a nasal pharyngeal swab. This is what's used to actually test and scrape inside your brain, um, your sinus cavities uh, for the, the COVID virus. And so, like I said, these were in very short supply. So it was actually a, a crowdsourcing um, group got together to see if they could come up with ways to 3D print these. So anyone at home who had a 3D printer could theoretically print this. That actually creates so a QA, QC problem down the line is how can you accurately test or is there anything available out there so we can guarantee that a, a set of swabs are actually safe to use? So we'd be looking at continuity of build. Um, is there is what I have up here down here? My, is there any cracks that are visible? Um, is it going to fall apart in your nose? And that's actually very critical. Um, so I was actually uh, I did many of these, um, and here's actually what the swab looks like. The, so um, in the three D scan, you can see the pattern of the little beads on here. Um, these lines are actually because I'm a little bit thicker here than here. So we actually developed some tests where we could actually go in and then scan all these. In this case, this is a little too big to be convenient. So actually they come with this break off point. And then I would mount this on, a, I've got a couple of various sample holders I could use. We'd mount this and we would just scan this. Again, this is a four or five minute scan. Another interesting sample is, this is called a lyo cake. Um, actually, normally they come in a thick glass vial. So this is basically freeze-dried medicine. A lot of medicines are unstable in solution, um, and you can't just take the vial full of liquid and freeze it. it. It'll crack the vial. It'll cause other problems. So what's done is they actually freeze-dry the samples of medicine of vaccine um, and that's you know, when they store these samples, like the COVID vaccines, they're all stored at cold freezing temperatures as to preserve them. But they're actually stored, a lot of them are stored in this form, in a freeze-dried form. And it's really critical, the structure of this cake, what's inside of it, um, how it forms. There's something called uh, collapse where it falls in upon itself. And if that would happen, it would actually become unstable and it would degrade faster. So a lot of study is done in at this point. Um, there's several ways to run a sample like this. In this case, like I said, it's out of this glass vial, but it can be run in the glass vial as well. You just have to um, go in and somehow remove the glass vial, which can be done by using a blank or by using a part of the vial that actually doesn't have any sample. And then we actually, in this case, they were curious. We took them out of the vial and we studied them in something like this, uh, a, cla a plastic container. And this is actually one I have for storage. Um, but I could store, I could run it like this 
And then we could compare, in this case, they wanted to compare out of the vial versus in the vial because it's actually quite easier to image it this way. But we did that study to see what could be done. Hey, there's my package finishing up. Let's have a quick look. So this is actually an x-ray, 2D x-ray of the pill pack. We can sort through the various x-rays. Everything looks good. Okay. Take a quick preview slice through the middle of my sample. So a few seconds, and there you go. There is my pill. There is my plastic wrap. Here's the metal foil behind it. You can actually see the coating on side, outside of the pill. If I enhance it a little bit, you can actually see that there's different material inside, so you can see the active ingredient inside there. So this is what I would get after a typical x-ray scan. Um, I think this is actually looks fairly good. And then I'm going to hit start. Now that'll start the 3D reconstruction process. This will take a few minutes. Um, so I have actually already pulled one out. And this is what it would look like after I've done a 3D reconstruction. This is our data viewer software, which is produces X, Y, X, Z, Y, Z cross sections through the sample. I can click anywhere I want. The sample changes. I can do measurements, cross sections, do measurements. And you can see I've got all the various components. I can see them quite clearly. I can see active ingredient and I can see my coding. So everything is there at this point. So everything you would want to do an analysis is there. Um, you could bring it up in 3D. But most cases, you're going to analyze it at this point. And we would use a program called CTAN, which would then go through and I could calculate out the actual thicknesses, the uniformity, um, the volume of the pill. That's another topic is you want the pill to be uniform. You know, every pill should be the same size, same amount of active ingredient. And this could all be done as a quality control procedure. So let me... Go back my software. Um, like I said, let me pull this sample out of there. I'll also get things like powders. Um, so people want to know after I make my sample or I'm working with the matrix, um, quite often it'll be a powder form and they'll get dissolved later on. Well, you want to know, or a, sorry, or a powder may be included inside of a capsule. And quite often what they want to know is how big are my particles? How uniform are they? Are they round? Are they same size? Um, are they needles? And so you'll actually, I'll get a sample like this. And so this actually will just screw directly on right inside my sample chamber. And then I can run it just like that. Um, and a nice thing about our CTAN software, which I talked about a little bit already, um, I can actually then go through our software. I think we showed this on an earlier video where I can actually then scan the entire sample and then using the software itself, I can then go through and then I can count and then do qualitative analysis on each one of those particles, thousands and thousands of particles, if, if that's what you have. So let's end it right there today. Um, like I said, these are some of the typical things I'm seeing from the pharmaceuticals. I've seen a few um, devices too. I don't have any handy with me today, but at this point, I think we'll end it right there and then um, we will go on to um, some questions that you might have for me.
everybody. Welcome back to the studio. So Dave here is just making his way. Uh, if you happen to have any questions that we don't have time to get to today, uh, then you can email them to uh, live.events at broker.com. Uh, also, remember to like and subscribe so that we know that you uh, like watching this type of thing. So Dave, we have a few questions that have come in. By the way, too, if you have any questions, just you can type them in the live stream. So the first question from uh, Ricky is, what about buy or tri layer tablets, multiple coatings? Do you get resolution on these? Yeah, absolutely. Um, if you're doing a like a bi layer, tri layer coating, you know, you could put, you'll see as long as they have slightly different, um, you know, density, you should be able to see them. And also, um, you can also see if you do a multiple coating technique, you can usually see the layer between the two coatings. Okay. So, yeah. All right. So that's a that's a definite. So uh, if, if you're looking at coatings, multiple are good to go. Um, Chris asks, is there any risk associated with the x-rays modifying that sample? No, very little. Um, you got, this is, you know, you got to think of a microwave, you know. We stick things in microwaves all the time. We don't even think about it. Um, yeah, you might heat your sample up a degree or two, but, yeah, you're not going to do any chemical changes. To yeah, and safety is always one of those things that's at the top of our uh, thoughts uh, as we're designing these instruments. Uh, they do meet the highest standards. So unlike some other, you know, if you're in the medical field, you're familiar with x-rays, you're familiar with things like using lead uh, clothes and, you know, special rooms, stuff like that. With mm -hmm. us, that enclosure really is capturing it all. Yeah, right? yeah. Um, you saw the instrument. There's there's a very thick lead coating all the way around it. Um, yeah, we meet all x-ray emittance standards. So it's, it's very, very safe. Now, one thing, actually, I, I've had a few questions before, especially people new to mm -hmm. x-rays, um, is... It's radioactive, right? They have these signs that say radiation and stuff like that. Like, do we have to worry about radiation getting on things, like in the chamber, no. or getting on a sample? No, no. X-rays don't leave any radiation behind. It's 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 light, basically. You know, it's okay. the same thing. It's it's not damaging. It's not causing any radiation to your okay. sample. So this isn't like uranium and plutonium, where it's a no. passive uh, emitter. No, emitter. I mean this it's just, a yeah. it's a it's a tungsten source, which is you know light bulb. Yep. Uh, and it lets out the um, X or turn yep, emits maybe. the X-rays when it's on, but when it's off, there's nothing. There's nothing. Yep. Just think of a very, very high energy light bulb. Yeah. All right. Let's get to the next question here. So Juan is asking: Is XRM any use for characterizing liquid vials? Can you tell anything about the package integrity? Uh, yeah, actually, um, and actually, this is something that's done already. Is um, people use XRM to look at a vial full of you know, vaccine or serum or whatever you want um, to actually do quality control on how much is there because you can actually quantify what's in that vial, even if it's hidden by the packaging. Um, and you can also do things like uh, the integrity of the seal, integrity of the septum. Okay, so the septum, that's that rubber seal on the top yeah, that you would yeah. poke through multiple times? Exactly. Um, quite often you'll, you know, you'll and put a syringe in, yeah, 10, 20 times. And so you want to make sure that septum's continually sealed every time. Okay. Okay. Now, what if you ended up having some sort of a precipitate form in that liquid? Yeah, actually, um, that would be visible as long as it was bigger than, a, you know, mm -hmm. a few 10 microns, 15 microns, you'll be able to see it, which most precipitates should be. Yeah, because oftentimes, you know, that label or something might obstruct that view. Maybe yeah, and if, you're, if it's old or something, yeah. or if there's a problem, you know, it's gotten hot, yeah, you might get a precipitate out. Okay. All right, the next question is coming from Jackson. Um, can you analyze an entire blister pack of pills? And yeah. I think we talked about that a little bit. We did. We talked about yeah. it a lot already. And absolutely, um, you know, in, in its entire packaging, box and all, you know, mm -hmm. you got a you know, standard box. So then you can image it. You know, the box goes away. You can't really see it. And you can see all the mm -hmm. um, pills on the inside. No so problem. is there a limit to the size of that blister pack? I mean, can you only look at things that are like, you know, three pills or six No, pills? I mean, it depends on the instrument. Some of our mm -hmm. instruments are small. But no, you can get bigger samples. You know, even like a small laptop will fit into our, our bigger systems. Okay, so you could almost take like a, a really big box of yeah, things absolutely, and yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So Shang is asking, can you analyze a device that also has a liquid inside of it as well as solid pieces? So I guess this might be you know a medical device. Maybe you have a in yeah, inhaler I mean, or something like that. Yeah, and actually we showed with the EpiPens where you had. Um, you know, the vial inside a mechanical mm -hmm. device. And you can see the liquid, 
you know, liquid being amorphous, you know, it's continually moving. You can't really tell anything about the liquid, but you can definitely say that there's liquid, how much is in there. And you can easily see that within the device itself. Yeah, so one of those auto injectors, yes, it's important to mechanically functions, but we also need to make sure it has enough of that medication in it. That's correct. Right? That's yeah. correct. All right, next question from Jeremy. How large of a device could you analyze? Say, could you put like a blood glucose monitor or blood pressure type monitor into a machine? Yeah, anything from a, a really, really tiny implantable device. Mm -hmm. Any, like I said, you know, a laptop will fit in the big system. So, yeah, you've got a wide range of, uh, of sizes and you can run you know, any type of mm -hmm. device, really. And, and I think it's also interesting to think about, we had talked about watches nowadays, mm -hmm. integrating those medical features about how you could even use these tools to analyze specific parts of a larger device. So yeah. if you had that that watch, you can really inspect the Yeah, you features. can go through and look at, you know, the, the actual boards and like the speakers and, you know, um, all those little the solder joints. Mm -hmm. You can see all that stuff inside of your watch. Right. Okay. So the next question. Um, actually, I think we're, we're at the end of our questions here today. If you do have any other questions, though, please make sure to send them again to that email address, live.events uh, at brooker.com, and uh, we will get a response to you. Uh, so thank you for tuning in uh, to this first episode of uh, season two. We'll have a lot of other really interesting episodes coming now. So uh, until then, make sure to keep your signal high and your background low.